We are talking today about anxiety, how I overcame anxiety and took charge of my life. I've been living with panic attacks for 20 years and I found a lot of things over that time that have really helped me and I just wanna share that with you guys. These videos, Mornings with Marlene, is where we sit down and do our makeup together. This is the look that I did today. It's a little more dramatic than what I was expecting, <laughs> but I still like it. We used neutrals. I used the Patrick Ta palette today. So we do our makeup together. We talk about real life things. So our topic today is all about anxiety and panic attacks. Very quick disclaimer before I get into this video, I am not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a mental health specialist at all. I'm just sharing advice from me, someone who's lived with panic attacks for 20 years. So take that what you will. These things I'm sharing are just things on my own that have really transformed my life and helped me get over having so many panic attacks. So let's get right into our makeup look and our topic on how I overcame anxiety and took charge of my life. So let's talk about anxiety today. I have a lot of experience in that. I've been dealing with panic attacks for 20 years. So let me tell you my story really quickly just so you understand where I'm coming from. I had my first panic attack ever in 2005. It's been almost 20 years. I was in college at the time. We were in church service and just, you know, it was the singing at the beginning of the church service and out of the blue, I felt like I was having a heart attack. You know how people say when they think that you're dying that your life flashes before my eyes? That's what happened literally in the middle of the church service. I was sitting there, I had stabbing chest pain, arm went numb, had a hard time breathing. I started getting really lightheaded and felt like I was going to black out. And in that moment, it was like my life had flashed before my eyes, all of these key moments in my life. It was the craziest feeling, you guys. I literally thought I was dying. I was like, I'm really young. Why am I having this? I thought I was having a heart attack. We left church, went to the ER. Long story short, after sitting in there for eight hours, they didn't take me seriously because I was, I was young. The doctor said, you had a panic attack. And at that time, no one really knew what panic attack was. I had never really heard much of it at all. And I was like, a panic attack? What the heck is that she gave me Tylenol after pressing on my chest where I started crying because I still my chest was so tight I couldn't even move my left arm at all sent me home with Tylenol and that was it fast forward to a couple weeks later I had another attack went back to the doctor same thing they said oh this is just a panic attack and this doctor had then put me on a ton of medication so much medication you guys that I was a walking zombie I almost didn't even pass my senior year of college because I was so you know sorry for the language, but I was so drugged up that I was, I, I could barely walk around. I could barely function. And this is someone who is a straight A student, high achiever and all that. For me to go to, from that to my senior year of just really struggling to even stay awake, I was falling asleep in class, you guys. So I didn't get any support. I wasn't told anything on what caused it, what else to do. It was my options were, here's some Tylenol that's not going to do anything. Or here's a bunch of medications that are going to make you a walking zombie for you to deal with it. So fast forward to now, 20 years later, I had so many episodes, you guys, of massive panic attacks going to the ER because they had gotten so bad. I still was like, okay, something is wrong. Like it would, my symptoms would vary a little bit in between. And they got so bad that I was afraid to drive. I was afraid to go out on my own. And what a lot of people don't know is when you have panic attacks, it's a cycle. It feeds off of itself. So you have one panic attack, you stress out about having that, or you're traumatized about the place of where it happened that it's almost like it causes PTSD, at least it did for me. And then that triggers more more stress, more anxiety, which then causes more panic attacks. And it's this vicious cycle that gets so out of hand. It got to the point, you all, where mine had gotten so bad, I wasn't getting the help I needed. I, I was afraid to leave the house, was really, really struggling. So that's kind of my backstory with my panic attacks. And in the meantime, I'm running a brand. I'm a, a brand owner, I'm a CEO. I'm in the public eye and all that. But behind the scenes, it felt like my life was falling apart because of these panic attacks. They affected my daily life so badly. So over the years, I have learned certain things that have triggered my attacks, have triggered my anxiety, made them worse, certain things that have really helped that I just wanna share with you guys today because I know how debilitating it is to live with anxiety, to live with panic attacks. Like for those who don't live with that, it's it's really hard to understand how, I hate to be dramatic, but it's, it's traumatic to live with them because it greatly affects your ability to live a very fulfilling, peaceful life because you're stressed out and you're dealing with these attacks. So the first thing I did that was life-changing for me, you guys, is I got a dog. You can, I don't I don't know if you guys can hear her story. I actually have three dogs now. I started with one. I started with my dog, Lady. She changed my life. Like I, I have stories to tell you for future videos. I would not even be sitting here alive today if it wasn't for my dog, Lady. She literally has saved my life. And when it came to panic attacks, I got her specifically to be almost like a therapy dog. So she's a Cavalier Spaniel. I did a lot of research on what type of dogs were calm, would sit in my lap, be nice and chill. And the Cavalier Spaniels were the breed that I had found out. So I searched 
searched for different people that had them. You know, I checked shelters first. No one had um, a younger one that I could have trained to be my support dog. So I finally found Lainey. I got her. You guys, there's something so therapeutic about having an animal that just distracts you. And you know what is crazy now? She can sense when I'm going to have a panic attack before I even know when's coming. And she will find me. Like she's, you know, she'll be off in a corner snoring somewhere. She'll come waddling over and will crawl in my lap and sit on me. She'll sniff my ear. She'll distract me. And next thing I know, I'm having a panic attack, but my panic attacks are less severe because she's right there with me. And there's something just so therapeutic about her being in my lap that just, it's like a distraction. It's therapeutic. So if you guys can, I know not everyone can get a dog for various reasons, but if you can, I'm telling you guys, she changed my life and dramatically helped my panic attack in ways that I never thought. Then the next thing that I started doing was taking bubble baths. I used to hate taking bubble baths, you guys. I am my friend, Christina, she's a big bubble bath person. Every Christmas and birthday, she sent me bubble bath stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. I wouldn't really take them. But then when I moved to Washington, it was a little bit colder. I started taking bubble baths and you guys, the effect that it had on my anxiety levels or my stress levels was huge. I would sleep better. I would be more relaxed. There's something just therapeutic about sitting in warm water. And I, you know, I'd add the lush bombs and some bath salts and things like that. I make it a whole experience. And now every night when I can, I take a bubble bath and I notice a huge difference in how I sleep on the nights that I don't. You know, I'll still shower and stuff obviously before bed. Being in a bubble bath where I'm taking time and relaxing drops my stress level so much and it really helped the amount of panic attacks that I was having too. And it's it's funny because when I thought of baths in the beginning, I was like, ew, I don't want to be sitting in my own filth or whatever. So I, you know, I have a routine. I take a shower before I get in or I take a shower after I take a bath or whatever. And now it's like, I can't imagine life not having a bubble bath. So like when we were looking at houses, we moved to Texas. My first thing was like, what does the bathtub look like? It's so important to me now. Whereas when I was looking at houses in the past, I was like, I don't care if it has a bathtub, give me a big old shower or whatever. Um, so it's funny how things change over time. <laughs> and one thing I will say too, you guys got to make an experience. You can't just like turn on the water, throw in some whatever and just plop in there. Like, you know, I light a candle. I grab a book to read or, you know, grab my phone to listen to a podcast. I put in like beautiful scented things. I like, like make it a whole experience. And I just, um, I just splurged for this last Christmas and I got a towel warmer. They have them on Amazon, you guys. It's life changing, I'm gonna tell you. I got a towel warmer in the bath. And so now when I get out of the bath, I grab that warm towel out of that bath warmer, you guys. I look forward to my nighttime routine like nothing else. It is an experience. And then afterwards, I sleep so much better. Like I'm telling you guys, like take that time for yourself. It's a half hour before bed. Turn off Netflix a little early, have a bath for yourself make it this whole beautiful experience have a glass of wine if you want whatever it takes to get you to just kind of wind down after a long day is huge then the third thing I noticed that was huge for my health was being surrounded by nature so I was born and raised in California and at my peak of panic attack and stress in my life and just trauma and a lot of really bad things going on in my life was when I was living in LA I talk about this in another video too about how LA became a toxic place for me I'm not saying LA is toxic don't don't send me hate mail you guys those living in LA but for me personally it was stressing me out because it was so crazy busy there was so much traffic and there wasn't enough nature so this was just a byproduct I wasn't even expecting this to happen so we moved to Washington and instantly you guys when we moved to Washington and I was surrounded by trees cooler weather water mountains lakes my stress level and panic attacks almost disappeared overnight it was shocking how much of a difference it made like just being surrounded by nature was so therapeutic for me. So I would go on walks. I would make sure I was outside more. I just would go look at trees. I mean, I didn't even have to go on these big hikes, but I just had to make sure that in some way I saw nature around me and would just have moments of silence outside and it just would melt my stress away. I know I'm like having a hard time speaking right now. I'm just shocked how much of a difference it made you guys. Like I got off my medication. I slept better. I was less stressed. Like my life quality overall improved so much just by living in a place that was surrounded by trees. Now, obviously I know people can't just up and move, but if you can go to a park every day or just do something to be surrounded by nature, for me, it was so therapeutic. Sorry, I gotta hydrate my lips. They're so dry today. So the fourth thing that I did was I started exercising. Now this is kind of a no brainer. We all know that exercise has benefits for our health. I'm right now, I'm not even gonna lie. Right now, I'm not even gonna lie. You guys, I'm struggling with this piece. I have to get my butt in the gym. Like I did better when I lived in a place where I wanted to be outside more. That's why I miss Washington a lot is just honestly because of the nature
nature. I loved being outside going on hikes and walks and things. Exercise just made such a huge difference in my overall well-being. Like it was just wild. It was wild, you guys, how much of a difference it made. Like we know that it, it boosts endorphins, it helps with your overall health and things like that. I personally, I try to make it a point to get outside versus being in a gym. Like I still saw results with my panic attacks when I would go to the gym too, but there's something with just being outside in nature and going for walks and exercising out there, I saw a bigger improvement. So obviously if there's any way that you can incorporate exercise, helps. One thing that I love doing is I did tennis. So I think that's what I'm gonna do now, you guys, because I have a hard time getting myself in a gym. I just feel, I feel like a hamster in a wheel. Like every time I go to the gym, I'm like, I don't know, there's people watching and I feel like I'm on a little machine. It just doesn't feel natural to me at all. So I have a hard time getting motivated to go to the gym, but I think I wanna get back to doing tennis lessons because I used to play tennis in high school and I loved it so much. And that'll give me a chance to be outside. It'll be good exercise. It's fun. I feel like it'll be more motivating for me. So that's kind of my advice on that one. If you could find a sport, a league to join or do something like that, or find a buddy that you can go on a walk with, you know, every day after work, that will help your anxiety so much. So all of these things that I'm mentioning, guys, it's like none of it's really groundbreaking, but it was the cumulative effect of all these different changes that I was making, where I cleaned up my diet, I exercised, I got a dog, I took bubble baths. It was like every change that I made got better and better and better till I got the point where my panic attacks for quite a while had completely disappeared. It was just, it was amazing. So while we're on the health conversation, the fifth step was I cleaned up my diet. This, I was shocked, I don't know why, to see the correlation between what I was putting in my body, what I was eating, with how my mental health was affected. I, look, we know it affects our body, like, oh, I'm not gonna die of heart disease or this and that if I eat healthy. We tell ourselves that, but there's a correlation between mental health and diet that I think no one talks about. Like, no doctors, what, no doctors told, talked to me about any of this stuff, you guys, when I went through panic attacks. It was like, here's a pill, bye, see you later. There's no, like, you know, let's let's see how your, how is your your diet or are you getting exercise are you speaking with a counselor all these other things that could have been told to me that I should have known that no one told me no one talks about but my diet was huge so, so really quick I have to talk about this step really quick you guys because I'm not using the cream in here because it's it's just too too greasy it slides around so I'm using a brown eyeliner pencil it's just a makeup geek one because I like how creamy they are but I'm using that instead of this okay back to the story so the diet change I made is I cut out sugars that was huge and then I cut out gluten. So I got tested for celiac because I had a lot of health issues going on and um, it was a functional doctor was like, let's just see if you have celiac. Came back negative. He said, I, I still want you to just try going gluten-free because it's gonna help you regardless of whether you have celiac or not. Just try it. He said, cut out any proce processed starches. He was like, you know, I'll let you have rice and potatoes for now. Eventually we'll try to get those down too. But he's like, I just want you to cut out breads, no pasta, nothing that's processed um, starch. So I did and then the other thing I cut out was dairy so those were my top three it was dairy processed starches and sugar and he said I want you to stick with it for at least six months to see a difference he's like it's not gonna happen overnight so he said don't give up he's like I really want you to stick with this for six months come see me again and let's see how you're feeling in that six months you guys not only was my panic attacks gone my stomach issues my like heartburn my fatigue my body aches like all these things people were, you know doctors told me I had fibromyalgia and I have SIBO and all these things. I was, I've been diagnosed with so much, you guys. I might as well be a lab rat at this point. But the diet change was massive. So I have stayed off of gluten for since then. Sugar's been a little bit harder, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's my nemesis, is sugar. I can give up fried foods, I can give up bread and pasta, but you know, take away my little like sweet treat. <sighs> Man, it's so hard, you guys. But when I started feeling better, it was motivation for me to stick with it because it really, it really did help my mental health on top of it. And I, I know it's a given, you guys. I'm not gonna talk about it for long, but no one makes, no one tells you. They don't make that correlation of mental health and diet. Then the sixth thing that I did is I took mini trips. Now, I, I'm not saying you have to like go to Europe and be this expensive thing. I took day trips. So when I was in Washington, you know, I took a trip to a really nice park or I went to the lake or something like that. There's day trips that you can do that will get you out of your environment 
environment because what I've noticed with panic attacks and anxiety is that it's almost triggering to be in the same place that you had those attacks. Like I said it earlier, it's like a PTSD in a way. Like for example, a lot of my panic attacks that I had was why I was sleeping. I have no idea you, why you guys. And so ever since then I've struggled with insomnia because mentally it's challenging for me to sleep well because mentally it's challenging for me sometimes to sleep through the night because I think internally I'm like, am I gonna have a panic attack? Am I gonna have a panic attack? There's almost like trauma attached to it. And it was really hard for me for the longest time to be able to even go to sleep because I was stressing out on whether I was gonna have a panic attack. So same thing with our environment. If you are in a place where, if you're in the same place all the time, you're having these panic attacks, it can almost be traumatic. Even if it's, you know, in your house, like just get out of your house, go somewhere, be somewhere different. That change of scenery is gonna be so good for you just to kind of distract and trick your mind into thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm in a new place. So I'm not gonna have a panic attack here because I haven't had one in the past before. This is a new place, so I'm okay. You know, like it's it's kind of a weird, I don't know if that will work for everyone, but for me it did because it's like, I was kind of like trying to trick myself. Let me put on my lashes and mascara really quick and then we'll do the last step. This look turned out a little more dramatic than I was expecting. I was gonna do a simple glam and now it's like full on, like we're going out glam. <laughs> I will do a more simple look for the next tutorial, you guys. The last thing that I did was cut out stimulating things. So I cut out, I mean, as I'm drinking coffee right now, but this is decaf. Every time I get coffee, it's decaf. So I cut out caffeine. I cut out going to large crowds. Like when I go to um, the mall now to go to, when I go shopping now, I go during the week in the morning when it's not as crowded. I don't go to concerts, I don't go to things like that. I'm not saying cut out all of these things that are really fun, you guys, but for me, anything that was overstimulating, I noticed would start to stress me out and trigger panic attacks a day or two later. So I started to just cut out anything that was overstimulating for me, like even certain shows that were like high packed action or even listening to music, you guys know, like I love my R 90s R&B hip hop, call me an old lady, I don't care, it's the best music ever but even now when I'm in the car because I'm stressed out with there's traffic like Texas has crazy traffic I don't want to hear about California traffic come to Houston you <laughs> You haven't experienced nothing. So it stresses me out when I'm driving. So now I listen to calming podcasts or like calming music and things like that. I don't listen to like my hip hop and R&B while I'm driving anymore because anything that's like overstimulating, even if it's the smallest little things, it all adds up and I just notice a difference. So take or leave that one as you will. <laughs> so that's my tips for how I overcame anxiety, took charge of my life. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out there too. Hopefully this tutorial was fun for you. Again, check the description box I will type out specific directions, what brush, how to apply it, everything in the box below. So make sure to check that out. See you guys next week for another Mornings with Marlena and I will talk to you soon. Bye.